All right, welcome back, my friends. Here we are in the Joe Nerds toy room, <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, man, what a naive fool I was thinking that I could somehow review the two of these figures together in under 15 minutes. <laughs> but anyway, hey, what the hell? I, I tried and I failed, so the lesson is never try. No, that's not true. So now we've got, as promised, Triclops. Yeah, you know, this Triclops is just a smidgen below trap jaw when it comes to coolness. I won't lie, he's not perfect. He's not perfect, but he's really awesome too, you know? Um, you know, one thing about him, if I could say anything negative about him, is that he is sculpted in a very awkward pose. A very, very awkward pose. and. A thought came to my mind that had never come to my mind until just this morning when I got down to filming is that uh, he his pose I really wish I had I really wish I had the vintage Playmates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles shredder figure I really wish I had that figure because in my memory, the Shredder figure was posed in a very, very similar position. Of course, the Shredder figure was even more... <laughs> he was really awkwardly <clears throat> crouched in like... <clears throat> like really, really... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I made that sound effect, fellas. <laughs> but anyway, he, he was really crouched in an awkward position, but... And I remember especially that Shredder had the same kind of uh, crouched kind of uh, feet, the kind of legs that were slanted in that direction. But anyway, I'm having a hard time describing my feelings on this. But, uh, but the, you know, that, that's about it. Th that is the only thing that I could, you know, the only thing that I can really say bad about this Triclops figure is, um, it, it, you know, it, it, it looks beautiful. It looks amazing. It's awesome. But, um, you know, hopefully you don't have in mind to have him doing too, too much because he's kind of a figure due to his sculpt that he's only great in one pose, in one position, you know? But then again, now that I'm thinking about it, I really shouldn't, I really shouldn't be so, um, so hard on Triclops here because a lot of the figures in the 2000X line are guilty of that problem. So I don't know what it is, why I, that, that's really unfair. I'm sorry about that, Triclops. It's really unfair of me to really harp on the matter when it comes to him, but I, I guess I did it because his his pose is um, is the most exaggerated, I suppose. Eh, anyway, regardless, let's get on to the damn thing. So Triclops, let's bring him on closer for you to look at, um, just like I did with Trapjaw. Yeah, you know, aside from that little little. Um, you know, that, that little critical moment I had there, you know, I, I, you can't deny that this Triclops is awesome. Uh, he has some really nicely sculpted um, arm gauntlets. I really like these gauntlets. They're, um, I hope this is going to come across good on camera. They're not so much round, like around his, um, they're, they're not really sculpted round all the way. They kind of have like a square, kind of like a more squared off uh, sculpt to them, which is very unique. Um, and then you've got around his, on his, uh, yeah, like trap jaw, I'll focus on the upper portion, then I'll move on to the feet later. So over here, Ah, this is another thing. The Four Horsemen really went um, mechanical with this one, too. They kind of made it seem like Triclops is more of a cyborg character 
than, than the Triclops that we're used to in the vintage and classics. Because as you can see here, he's got some heavy technological pieces like some uh, some sort of cables running along his shoulders and then you've got even his neck his neck is more of a bionic uh, plated neck and then you've got a lot of technology running through his visor as well all the way around um, that, that's another unique thing about him so you know the, the both of them were made to to be a little more a little more cybernetic than in the past yeah even triclops so then let's do this in order you've got he has a, a really nice loincloth here that is very you know what now that i'm thinking about it the loincloth seems really reminiscent of from the 1987 live-action movie, if you recall the character Blade, the evil warrior Blade, I think I remember he had a very similar uh, plated loincloth, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, and then you've got the standard, uh, you've got the standard boots with a nice shin guard on there. And you've got some nice, uh, really unique knee pads sculpted in there. So then we'll take you on to the back. Now the back, he has the same loincloth, the plated loincloth running down the back. And he's got the trademark, um, the, the place in the back of his armor to sheathe his sword. So the sword, you know what? I'll deal with the sword in just a little while. We're dealing with the figure here. So now let's get on to the action features. Now, the thing that makes him Triclops is the three eyes. So, the first eye, you know, and these eyes are light-piped, but unfortunately, the, the lighting in my toy room is not really, it's not shining in the right part, in the right, uh, the right angle for this, but it is light-piped, as you can see here on top of the head. But uh, the, the light piping does work fairly well. I'm not sure how it's going to show up in this video. But anyway, so you've got the first of the three eyes. And then you just have to, of course, like before, you have to manually turn it. And then you've got a blue eye with more of a, more of a furrowed brow. And then you've got a green eye. With, uh, with another kind of like furrowed brow, instead of more like an evil scowl, you have like a furrowed brow. So then let's take it back to the more evil, the red eye, that I really prefer. So then there you go, there's his three eyes. And aside from that, he also has an action feature, which is tied in with his accessory. So here is his sword. So you've got the, it, it, and it's very reminiscent of the vintage and classics uh, Triclops sword, Triclops Fisto sword, I guess you could call it. Uh, but this time it's even more technologically, it, it has even a little bit of technology sculpted in there. And the handle is extra long. The handle is a lot longer than, uh, than we've seen in the past with the other Triclops swords, so he holds it in this hand pretty firmly, actually. Wow, very firmly. I have not done this very often. So then there you go. It's kind of like he has it in a dueling. Yeah, he kind of holds it in more of like a dueling fashion. So then you did notice earlier on he has a button on his back. So that, of course, is you push the button and he swipes down with it. Yeah, and uh, I'll be fair, uh, fairly, it's, it's a nice simple action feature and it works well. You know, I'll, uh, I'll give you a look at it from here so Trap Jaw isn't in the way. So there you go, that's it. So there he is with his sword. Now, another accessory that Triclops is very, very, very famous for 
uh, in the 2000X series was the addition or the introduction of his Doom Seeker. So, the Doom Seeker in the 2000X line, you know, if you fellas out there that are watching this do not own this figure, and you're thinking, darn, I wish I had the 2000X Doom Seeker. Well, you're not really missing too much. It's very, it's very simple looking, no paint on it whatsoever. Uh, but I think the worst part of it is, is it's very, very soft. It, like, look at that. It, it's, it's very, very, it's very, really too soft. And I'm not a big fan of overly soft plastic, but uh, it looks decent. But uh, the classics, with the classics figure of Triclops that we've gotten, we got a, a lot better uh, Doom Seeker with that. So then, but as well, it comes with this stand. So I'm going to move Triclops off to the side here a little bit. So it comes with this stand as well. So, and, and you know, the stand even looks a lot like the stand we've been getting in the classics line, to tell you the truth. And then you just pop on the Doom Seeker, like so. And um, it's it's slanted oddly. I, I don't really know why the um, the end. Show you that the end of it is slanted. It's molded slanted like that, and I'm really not sure why. But um, anyway. You just pop it on, and he kind of, yeah, that, that's really weird. I'm not really sure why Mattel did that, but uh, he, he kind of flies sideways, I guess, or you could, if you put him like, if you put it like that, I guess it looks a little bit better. So anyway, yeah, there's that. I, I suppose the Doom Seeker, the lackluster Doom Seeker, might be part of why this figure, you know, isn't isn't as much of a hit with me as Trapjaw was. You know, he's not perfect. He's um, he's not bad. He's not bad, but he's still awesome. But he's he's got it's just something about him. He um, he he just falls from being perfect. Uh, you know, but that's just my opinion. So anyway, guys. Hope you all enjoyed this little review of uh, Triclops from the Masters of the Universe 2000X line. So, until next time guys, take care of yourselves and I will talk to you all again very, very soon in the very, very near future. Bye for now.